we had the ZK Casino rug uh, that happened about uh, three or four days ago. So $32 million there. Um, that was pretty insane. Those guys are, they go back a while, um, and they're actually close with the ZigZag team, uh, which was, a, I think, a decentralized exchange on Arbitrum. And the crazy stuff about that is they actually went and doxed these guys literally within 24 hours, right? Um, so it, it's pr it really goes to show, like, is, is it worth it for you know, these guys to rug all this money? I mean, $32 million is a lot of money, but... Like, they're going to have to be looking over their shoulder, basically, right, for the rest of their lives. Um, you know, that's a lot of money to steal from someone. On that same note, um, Avi, who is the guy who exploited Mango Markets, uh, I think, over a year ago now, was convicted. Um, his situation is kind of wild because he basically arbitraged uh, Mango Markets by pushing up the Mango price and using that to drain all of the TVL from the uh, platform. Right. And he thought like that was a legal thing to do. Right. Because it's a protocol. He's exploiting it. And really code is law is a thing a lot of people say in the crypto space. But the problem is that when you do something like that, it brings a lot of eyes to it. And he also was very public. So he took the approach of basically saying, like, look, like I had a profitable trading strategy, like very famously on, on Twitter. Right. Um, and trying to basically own it and say so he did it. And then at the same time he was doing that, he was fleeing to Puerto Rico and trying to delete all of his trails. Right. Um, but unfortunately for him, he thought it was okay because I think what ended up happening is there was some sort of SEC announcement or something that made it seem like it was cool, basically what he did and like, he wasn't going to be prosecuted. But then when he went back into Puerto Rico, which I think has extradition, um, the U S grabbed him and he got put on trial and he got convicted, uh, two days ago, I think for 20 years. And the obvious situation is wild because for me, right, you guys all know I do meme coins and DGN and stuff, and a lot of you guys do too, right, my listeners. And what he did actually was he launched a coin called Mango Inu at the time, and everyone was basically thinking like he was going to money launder the funds from the, you know, so to speak, rug with this Mango Inu coin. So it was like a good opportunity to DGN because the guy was super rich. So like, why would he rug you again, right? And he had taken this big stance that it was like a trading strategy. So like, in my eyes... Right. He's like basically going to money launder his money and there's no way he rugs this coin. But then he goes and he rugs a shit coin. Right. So I <laughs> stop it. Wait, that really happened. Yeah, bro. He fucking rugs <laughs> <laughs> a lot of money. And I was like, yo, fuck this guy. Like, cause it, it really, it, it just really irked me. Cause I was like, we all thought he was just going to money launder and like, we weren't in mango like protocol. Right. So yeah, but that was, that was like a funny thing that happened with that i was in, i like put like 10 ETH into that and he rugged me and i was just like shell shocked that that actually happened and then man uh, i have like mixed emotions on that i'm like <laughs> you, you, you know because like that that's kind of like like the that type of curve play that i would do too but at the same time it's like can you really say anything for the rugger rugging you you know it's like <laughs> oh no yeah you know what you're getting into right yeah you but know you're like you trying to you're trying to think like okay if i'm this guy Maybe I want to wash this money, this like yeah, money. No, it, it's on a, the decks. Not mad at the not mad at the thesis. I'm, I'm <laughs> done. It's just just it's just disappointing, you know. He had a good shot to come back and be the underground hero with his meme, and he just yeah, took bro. It like off. everyone was tweeting like about <laughs> Mango Inu and stuff back then, and then he just fucking like, pulled it. And I was just like, well, I guess that, that uh, makes sense that that's what ended up happening. Uh, Rugger's rug, man. Yeah, and then to that point, there was another exploit called Hedgy. And with Hedgy, uh, Hedgy is basically like almost like a, a platform where you can lock tokens, as I understand it. And what ended up happening there is someone was able to exploit it and grab the lock tokens, unlock them, and sell it into the pool. So it created a really big arbitrage opportunity for shitcoiners and people who are watching the markets. A lot of times nowadays, um, a really good strategy for traders that not a lot of people do, including myself, is to watch for big price drops um, on DEX traded coins. So if you see like a flash sell, basically there's like Telegram channels that do this. They look for like flash drops. But this wasn't really a flash because it happened over like 30 minutes. But if you see like a 70 or 80% drop in a coin, if it's not an exploit where the exploiter has tokens that they can continue dumping on the pool, it creates an opportunity for people to basically buy the bottom if the team comes back and says like, hey, like we get this happened and we're going to continue working on this project, it like is effectively free money. 
And there's been so many situations like this, like Gala, I think like about eight or nine months ago, where like it fully bottomed on an exploit and like went up like 100x. So like it's a really good area of the market to pay attention to, which no one does. And there's very limited tools that actually look for this kind of stuff. So it's a, a good edge for you if like you're looking for a good what way to What tools do you use to buy the exploit? Money. Because for me, like, like I, I definitely, like if I can catch the social news and I'm logged into my computer and, and, and there's one of those like either social fraud or like a straight exploit dip, I yeah. tend to buy those. Is there something you use? Yeah, so there's a channel uh, called Flash, uh, what's it called? Uh, Flash Loan ETH. And there's a Flash Loan BR, uh, BTC channel. And basically what he does is he looks for these flash drops and then alerts you when they happen. And he shows you like what the owner wallet is basically. And like, you can look into it and see if it's safe. That said, obviously when someone is telling you something is happening, you can assume that they are buying automatically before they tell you. But in my experience with this channel, like he shared it to you very, very quickly. Right. Another thing you can do that I've done in the past is go through and look at these flash loans and find the wallets that bought earliest, check their trading history and see like, do they consistently buy flashes? If they do, you can track them, and then next time they do it, you can either copy trade them with like Maestro, right, or Prodigy or one of those bots, or you can literally like check what they bought and see if you can buy in after them if they don't own like the whole pool. So those are two really good strategies. God, I love crypto. Play. <laughs> Thank you. <Bro. laughs> yeah, it's 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 like it can be really good like to to play these flash ones because literally no one does it because it's hard, and a lot of times if there's a barrier to entry for some of this stuff, it just creates an opportunity for you if you're willing to like put in the time to, to build something or like figure out a good process to take advantage of it. Okay. Awesome. The next thing we could talk about is along the same lines of like legal stuff. Uh, the SEC lawyers actually were, I think either indicted or charged or convicted basically, which for like overextending uh, their power as far as it came to like cryptocurrencies, which is interesting because like everyone in the cryptocurrency space has been saying that this has been a thing that's happened, right? Uh, but now these guys are actually like being gone after, right? And to, for like, to go that step and take it that far really indicates that like, in my opinion, like some sort of bullish step for a macro environment um, for crypto. It might mean like the SEC maybe will like fuck off with some of this stuff and stop like overarching. We can only pray, right? <laughs> we can only hope. And it's like we're so busy in our in our like meme and and this week, like you know, the Bitcoin space. So like, I didn't even notice that to be to be quite frank with you. I think I might have saw one or two headlines. Yeah, it actually, wasn't that big. You'd think it would be like a lot bigger, right? It's like catastrophic, like like huge, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're like, too busy it, trying it to argue about bit. who's the first uh, who's the first dog coin on, on Bitcoin. You know, it's like. <laughs> It's like, bro, yeah, dude, the world's blowing up, but... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then on Solana, um, and like, we'll wrap it up here, basically, there's been a lot of big coins on Solana that have happened over the last two or three days. And they've more or less gone under the radar just because people are paying a lot more attention to like BRC and Ethereum and stuff like that. And Solana had a bunch of big ones. So there was a, a big one called Gummy, right? I was going like to say, please Banner. talk about Gummy because where the hell did that come from? Yeah, you know? so that was by Crypto Banner. I actually was brought in to like do KOL for that. And then they scrapped the entire KOL round um, and they just did a fair, I mean, fair. And basically for Gummy, I was in two groups. So there's a project on BR on uh, Bear Chain called Gummy. And then there's this lot of project called Gummy. And I didn't know that it was like banter, right? If I knew it was banter, I would have paid more attention to it. But I'm like sitting Damn. at my computer and I'm looking and this thing is at like 25, 30 million. And I message in the group and I'm like, yo, is this live? Like, is this the... <laughs> Is this the like the gummy project? But that one was wild. Like people basically could have bought anywhere under fifteen million, really, and flipped that to like a, a nine or ten x on almost unlimited size. So like that was pretty crazy as far as Solana goes, especially because they did. I found like, it late, long. bro. Like I, I found it late. I forget what what my phone might have saw it at like sixty million or something. And I was like, you know what, man? No more bear market PTSD. I'm not calling top. I, I threw in. I did well on it, even finding it late. You know. I mean, yeah, it went it went up pretty hard. If you were just like 
you know, if you just had the balls to take the risk and, and buy into I it, did. like, I yeah. Did. <laughs> I, did. I was like, you know what? I missed this. Fuck them for not including me. You know what I mean? I was like, why didn't these guys call me? How come I don't know about this? And then yeah. I was just like, you know what? Let, let's lose the loser mentality here and actually like, 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 you know, just go for it and, you know, respect the pump. So, I mean, I have that like sniper mentality, so it, it's been hard for me over <laughs> the years to be able to like dive straight into those situations. I've gotten a lot better at it just because I've had friends who have had success doing it and I can kind of like left curve it. But like for something like that, I was just like, man, I don't know. I feel like it could go like a hundred million cause it's, it's crypto banner. But at the same time, Solana has been like a little slow. I was like, fuck, I was annoyed at myself because I missed it because I'm very like process oriented. So whenever I miss or fail a process, that's what bothers me. So I, I just couldn't do it. You know, <laughs> I'm looking at it I feel and you. my friends are, are pinging me the price and it's like 130. And I was like, Jesus, bro, because I had sent it at like 25, 30 million being like, wow, what a miss. And I was like, oh, OK, now it's like an actual like. You know, and then there, were, there was a pretty good gummy cope play too. I forget what it was called, but uh, yeah. So Maneki, let me see if I still have. It. Yes, that one. That's so another Maneki one, bro. Maneki came what's out. What's up with what's the, the, the story with day. that one, please? Yeah. So that one, I don't know who's behind it. So like, it's funny with some of these coins, like, uh, you know, there was Mew too, right? Mew was a really big one. A lot of yeah. these big coins, they come out of nowhere and they just have high liquidity and they just like absolutely go crazy on Solana, and the you just don't know who's yeah. behind it. And I think that's why that's important, right? Like, that was the one thing I wanted to talk about with Solana, which we'll talk about later, is, like, the format in which these coins launch. Because if there's no hype going into it, and it's a big liquidity play, and people are kind of speculating, and they want to know, like, what it is, that, like, air of not knowing, like, what it is, is what kind of propels it to be able to get to that next level. Like, with Maneki, Quite literally, yeah. it just, like, kept going, because no one knew what it was. So everyone's in DMs, like, who's is this? Like, who made this, Right. So we're all thinking, okay, it has to be someone bigger than the person we're talking to, right? And we're all DM DMing people we think are big who would know this, right? So, like, I think that's why these coins are so successful. But, yeah, Maneki was Same, awesome. I'm bullish on my friends not being in it. Like, you know yeah, what I exactly. mean? Like, straight up. Like, straight up. You're like, well, if this you know? person knows, then maybe I'm, like, late, right? But if they don't know and I don't know, well, then the people buying before us are probably the team. And they probably have money if they're adding so much liquidity and burning it. So, like, this thing should go to 100 I, I thought it would go to 100 million, and then I was like, maybe like 150. And then when Crypto.com listed it, I was like, holy, like that's crazy. I mean, dude, like, it's a beautiful chart. Like, I, I, I bought it at like I think it was 30 or 40 because I was like, how the fuck? The I was just mad again. Yeah. Same shit, same as coming. I'm like, all right, you know what? I got same emotion, same feeling. All right, let's rock and roll, baby. Tossed in a spot bag, pulled some out uh, when it was up in like I don't know. Well, what did it top out at so far? Like 150 ish or something? Maybe. Yeah, like 150 around there. Around there yeah. Yeah, man, that that it was fun though because I hadn't bought anything on Soul for a while. I was deep in yeah. Bitcoin. I was sitting there and I was like, you know what? Because for me, I'm not spraying and praying at those little babies anymore. Like I've already picked my winners. I picked my conviction plays, and I'm pretty much not going to touch something that's not near 10 million or like you know or some like maybe just under. So it, it had the numbers, and, it, it, and I was shocked and surprised. It had the numbers fast, and I had to grab the spot bag, you know, toss yeah. it. Toss I, I mean, like, it's, after, a, but, yeah. it's a more viable strategy now, right? To be able to like wait until you see conviction in a coin to ape it, just because these coins just have so much more upside than they used to. Like you wouldn't see that kind of upside in the past, like on some of these, especially if there's not a pre-sale, right? You kind of know there's not anyone really to sell on you. I think I entered Maneki around twenty or so, and then I added liquidity uh, at, at like I don't know forty or fifty to exit out around one fifty, basically. And then when I saw the yeah. Crypto.com news. I was like, holy shit, because like for reference, crypto.com doesn't list things. So the last thing it listed was I think Gecko. And Gecko was like basically Did they list Mog? Coin. Did they list Mog? I don't know if they listed Mog. I think they, they did, have. dude. But yeah, like, they don't point, list they really don't. Quick, yeah, though. they really don't. No, they, they absolutely yeah. do not. So like Gecko no listed hurry. really quick. So like Gecko like is pretty much consistently thought to be their coin that they deployed. And like if you look at all the funding wallets, they're all funded from crypto.com. So like when I shared Gecko early, like everyone was like, oh, it's probably crypto.com. And then they listed it and it was like, wow. And Gecko's like insane, right? So bro, I was like, these, wow. These big companies have balls, bro. Even the L1s too. Like, like the rules are out the door, bro. These guys are really just doing it. Like I was so shocked when, like, when we saw these L1s posting like and these big dApps and protocols post posting yeah. their logos like with the whiff hat. I was like, bro, this is going to be oh, weird. Yeah, it's like, wild. We were talking it's like, going to uh, get a lot weirder, my friend. It is going to get a lot weirder. <laughs> I've talked to so many L1s and L2s that are like, they understand now a meme coin is a go-to-market. Whereas like a year or two ago, you know, they would have shied away from this entirely. 
and they've really embraced the fact that meme coins are not necessarily bullshit and, and they serve a purpose, right? And you've seen that, like, with all these coins that are clearly deploying on these chains that are from big money, like VC Angels or the actual projects themselves. Yeah, man, it's it's, it's definitely like, like there's no way around it. And like the if we can't beat them, join them mentality. I'm great yeah. that the VCs are taking that route. If you saw, there was I think 17 million dollar wallet deploying capital uh, on Solana memes yesterday. Kind of kicked off this little mini um, micro bull inside of our current bull cycle, right? I don't yeah. know if you noticed that yesterday that they started with some Harambe buys at like a quarter million dollars each. And uh, is that, that why Harambe I, went up so much? Yeah. So this is this. Let me oh, tell you okay. what happened uh, yesterday. I was kind of watching it live. I just happened mm-hmm. to be in. I just happened to be in some of these chats and um, just a big holder of Harambe. So it started there. Everyone's like, "Bro, who the fuck was that?" Because we thought it was one of us, and like just not yeah. saying anything. You know what I mean? And uh, we were like, "No, no, no." We started tracing the wallet, and it had seventeen million dollars, and started slowly deploying it across like top notch Solana memes. So everyone yesterday started aping memes, trying to front run this wallet, and then another wallet popped up. So what I think happened is when Whiff kicked off these funds, put in requests for spends, probably yeah. about three to six months ago and they're just finally like seeing the market and the market's reaction during dips and, and, and then have a market you know you have to, you can't just deploy like that I don't care who you are like if it were my VC company I wish I could market by with but there's a process right so yeah. I think these processes are starting to become approved and they're starting to get to the point where they're deploying they're buying pups they're buying fucking all of these I think they bought like Joe Bowden and shit you, you can check the wallet oh, yeah, I actually doesn't have talk a tweet about- about how they were like uh, they were deploying capital, right? I mean, obviously Andrew is a little more degen than some of these other funds, but of course, like they were pretty open about how they were deploying funds. I mean, even market. Big Brain, right? He was like, he was openly, avidly, like, like he's the most degen VC out there, I'd say. Mm-hmm. And like, he was even not touching memes for a very long time. But he got in early. He called me, and like, we bought, we spent 100k live on a Spaces, and <laughs> he just started doing it like every day for a few weeks. Yeah. And now these guys get it. Like, like it's just a high multiple, and the winners have shown themselves. And there's ones like like Whiff and Popcat, and like those top coins that are just standing out and outperforming the market. And just like the way that Whiff got listed is just unheard of. Like, it's very rare that a market's going to buy an up only coin. And mm-hmm. buy enough to put it on their exchange, and that's exactly what happened. Like that's how it got listed on Binance and KuCoin. Like I know the dev, and those people do not know shit about fucking listings. It's a true meme coin, bro. Like yeah, um, but like they did not have percentages of allocation set aside. They didn't own twenty percent of their supply. It was a true meme coin, you know. So like Whiff really set the standard and did some impressive things that meme coins haven't seen before. And what we got yesterday was a little taste of what it looks like in just one day when one fund enters. So you guys know how many crypto funds there are. <laughs> oh yeah i mean like you know yeah, what i'm saying man? It. yeah i mean if yeah, you look like, at like puff on mantle right yeah. puff on mantle is like pure vc angel stuff like with a private cell raise like that's the same thing like who really cares about an lsd on mantle like let's be real right that's a meme <laughs> coin and like that one just like rips too right so when you get this big money behind these coins right this isn't a concept that existed before so like you kind of have to expand your horizons as far as like where you think these things can go to because some of them just have Tremendous upside. Dude, I was trying to tell my spaces, I'm like, dude, we have this bear market PTSD, and and it's real, because I was there with you, bro. I was on an airplane stuck in the sky when Solana was plummeting on my way home from Lisbon, like, two years ago, and all the Solana Labs team was, I was in the chats at the time, and they were all on airplanes, too, trying to, like, figure out the fuck's going on, and, like, (laughs) if you've gone through that and, like, held through or purchased Solana from $8 to all the way up to this, it's it's 200 mark, it's like, bro, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah i was in my uh one of my like dow chats like i was talking to the guys and they were sharing how like one of this guys who's like a dgen just isn't gonna make it because he keeps hitting these things super early and just flipping them for like you know 70 80 percent up and it's like you kind of have to adjust based on like what the market is telling you like the upside of some of these coins is yeah, that's why I said I kind of changed my strategy. Like as soon as the the, the first Solana like little meme run happened, and everyone like just admitted defeat, sold some Ethereum, came over, and, you know, started started trading with us. Like I, I was spraying and praying, and I was like, "Yo, this is a lot of fun." But now I I batched it down. I've, I've got my winners, and I still think there's major upside to the to to even with it three billion or whatever it's at right now. It's it's like I'm so comfortable. I'm not even checking it. Um, and, you know, I picked my my spots of conviction, and unless I see something like that's again like a twenty mil and it looks like up only and it looks like a ripper you throw those yeah. bear market top rules out the door and and you just go for it if, if you have the if you have the liquid to gamble on of oh course. yeah like, I mean, you know I've, I've been here with yeah, Solana for day one, so, right yeah yeah i got plenty and i sometimes i forget my bullets i'm chucking i'm like dude it's like soul's not 18 bucks bro like if you throw five soul at something like at one point that was like that was like two thousand <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> you know, it's like, it's really crazy. It's like, dude, soul's not 18 bucks anymore. You got to like, really pay attention here because like I'm sitting here just not even like putting dollar value at it. But yeah, the strategy's changed. I'm, I'm, I'm buying a little more smart on, and you're right. I think these meme coins are being used as a, as more of a go-to-market strategy than anything. And like, you've seen some memes like actually deliver dope products, like, like Bonk and Guac and like all these people that like actually have like, like super high functioning validators and like actually like like have a community oh, yeah. and like built and launched successful NFT projects and like are showing themselves at every crypto events, buying drones in the air with bonk signs. Like these guys are going next level and like it all started w- w- with a meme. You just got to decide who's going to be serious, who's not, and which ones are you following for just the meme. Like you know, we can get into pups at, at any point. I think it's a perfect conversation to segue into that. You know, because like talk talk about cross chain anomaly being perfect. Like like in like the face of like no. Like no one wants that, and like, and they built this like they built and used Solana as an L two, uh, yeah. like a Bitcoin L two, and it's like you know we can get into that whenever you want, but like it's it's really beautiful seeing seeing all all this emerge, and I think we've learned a lot over the last few months, you know. Oh yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I think it's a good point to transition. We can talk a little bit about Runes. So Runes, I think, started on either Friday or Saturday after the happening. So TW's here. Um, he you know is helping me with, with Runes. So I'm in a group with uh, Eddie and some other guys where, like, there's just a lot of rune stuff. And I I haven't done too much on BRC. I tried, but I've just been such an EVM person (laughs) that, like, my exposure (laughs) on that is like... It's like going from (laughs) Apple to Windows 95. That's how I talk about my ETH experience from Soul. And going from ETH to Bitcoin is, I I could imagine, very similar for you. Like, like, I was trying to get you into that, like, inscription. You have to, like, inscribe. You transfer your BRC (laughs) before you can sell it. What does this mean? Like, you're approving transactions. You don't know what's happening. Yeah, it's a weird world. It is a it's, weird it's so, world. It's so different, man. Yeah, so TW has been helping me. We're, like, managing a wallet together where we basically buy into stuff. So I'll let him talk a little bit about runes and ordinals. And then, Eddie, I'll let you chime in, too, just based on, like, what you guys are seeing in the space and, like, what some of the tools you guys are using. And, you know, I'll chime in where needed. Yo, yo, what's up? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. Uh, also, you, got the bath- you got the bathroom echo, but we can definitely hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in this like insanely large uh, room that I use as my office. So hopefully that goes not too bad. Um, let me see if I can adjust the mic. No, it, it, it's fine. It's fine. You I know, I learned spa- I'm on spaces on like my headset right now. I've been using my phone and just walking around on speaker like the last two weeks. I guess they made it so you can join on your computer now. This was not a thing. So like this is fantastic. Oh yeah, you, you can fully run them from the computer. I'm on like a soundboard and shit right now. I, I got like the whole setup, you know. Oh yeah, you sound great, man. Like I I I, I was like literally trying to talk in the speakerphone, you know, every time I'd host these things, and like it wasn't an option on my computer. Now it is. So this is fantastic. Yeah. Give buddy. it a shot, TW. But yeah, but yeah. Get, get into rooms. Um, you know, kind of it, it was a shit show. I'll just say that much on uh, Friday afternoon when the happening happened. And it kind of reminded me of the early days of Uniswap, where no one really knows what's going on, and everyone's just kind of trying to figure it out together, like what coins to buy, which one of these is legit, who's behind these projects. And one thing I really liked doing um, was kind of combining our chats and kind of seeing the 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 alpha that were, or, or just the, the information that was shared um, in both of our chats and looking for confluence and just going into those. Um, So I'm in an NFT project called Ordinals Penguins and it's a sub uh, 10K um, Bitcoin collection. And there's just a lot of legit guys in there who've been- We love the penguins. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Those guys were early to everything. They were buying pups at um, like 1.5 million uh, market cap. So for me, uh, being a little newer, I'm just literally aping anything that other people are talking in there, you know, just full uh, yeah. right, right curve mode. And it, it worked out really well because I think um, when things like, when events like this happen, when no one really knows what's going on, you kind of would just want to be a little more um, uh, open to risk and just kind of just, just use a spray and pray approach. So, so yeah, so that was kind of uh, my strategy going into runes and a lot of the plays worked out. Some of the other ones, um, 
not so well. But, but it wasn't yeah. your normal spray and pray. We had to like etch or mint these things, and like we had a. There were all these people that told us we needed to get nodes and know how to. Oh, yeah, I, I was to get nodes. Nodes. Enough, They freaked me out and gave me an almost <laughs> panic attack before. I'm like, bro, I'm ready. I know BRCs. I know ordinals. I got my bag ready. I, I was ready to go, but all these guys freaked me out, and I was almost on my way to Best Buy to buy a PC and. Download this, this ridiculous <laughs> software. Watching videos, start like, entering lines of code, and that's not <laughs> right. me, bro. I'm like a, I'm, I'm a consumer, but on like I'd say a little higher level, right? Like, but I'm, I wasn't yeah. ready to be shooting lines of code at these trans. It's not me. It's just not me. So, uh, I kind of learned really quickly on the first minute that runes happened. All of us in this chat that, that we were talking about together was like, dude, okay, we got a mint. Okay, so there's this mint thing, and then if you can slide how many mints you want. So the, the yeah. tool that I think is useful for the audience that, that doesn't know what runes are or wants to explore what it's like to actually mint one and not have to buy it on, on like the exchange, um, it's called Luminex. It's L-U-M-I-N-E-X. Luminex.io. Go to yeah, their I'll official tweet that Twitter. Out for you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely go to their official Twitter or, or you know, only click the links from them. But the, there's a thing you can click at the top. It's called Mint Rooms. So this is where we all started. We were like, all right, we're trying to mint the first top 10. So the, the crazy nerd guys who were setting up the nodes and setting up all of this manual stuff were people that were trying to claim and quote unquote etch these first runes on that block, on the exact happening block. Like to make that happen, it's, it, it's very complicated and costs tens of thousands of dollars. So those guys, the deployers, the creators, the people that we buy from were busy etching those runes and that yeah. they were doing that manually competing for the block space right so once they etched these tickers and these tokens and there was, I think there was only a, about a thousand of them that got through on the first block so so once that happened they were instantly available to mint on this luminex site so you, you connect your xverse wallet um i don't recommend using the okx wallet right now until they sort their shit out but um either yeah, xverse or as well or, yeah, Xverse, Unisat, or Magic Eden wallets all work well. And you can mint for the cost these these runes. So at first, we were like, all right, let's go race to mint these out. And then there were gas wars for the mints. You can mint multiple. You didn't need all of those tools because it does it all for you here. It splits your UTXO so you can do more than one transaction at a time. So people were racing and max minting a, a bunch of tickers. And there were only a few that actually sold out and that went for it and, and did decent. But um, that, that was kind of the story on the day of. I know TW and all you guys were mentioning. I'm like, bro, you got to tell them about this process they don't even know i'm like i'm sitting here like do i auto split how much gas do i need it says 88 i feel like i should make it 160 i think we were spending 3,000 sats um wild, yeah. to get transactions through and then by the time you're like fuck bro unisat's already got the runes marketplace up that's unisat.io a place you can trade as well as magic eden much more simply on magic eden um and we were just racing there and then by the time i looked at it i was like hey you know what it's cheaper than the fucking mint let's just buy them up here so you know i i i, I yeah, hate so my that that's the thing that's the thing yeah it, it was like the great arb for a couple of days until it balanced itself out but where it's landed is you can trade runes on magic eden there's a couple of top projects from ordinals that that have seemed very promising i, I would say safely uh, anyone else stop me if you don't agree arsic is probably the safest one <laughs> i mean they airdropped all of the og ordinals co collections very early and and if you sent it to yourself it started mining your airdrop early and you could check it on 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 your bitcoin wallet you could see how much how many of these are sick tokens you mined and when they let it go i ended up with a i only had two of them you know i had two from my omb's and i put them in the same wallet and i got what was called the boost and i ended up with a thirty thousand dollar airdrop um, from Arsic. So that thing already went through its airdrop people dumping phase and like already came back up. So it's kind of at a, at a really good spot. If, if anyone's listening and you want to, in my opinion, the, the safest one, I say that that's a good place to start. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that was kind of my experience. The rumor with is they're built, yeah. they're working on a room decks. Oh yeah, bro. Those That's people are real deal. Project, right? I mean, I mean, yeah, we they... need some applications too on on runes, right? Like, I feel like just from using runes after using PRC, it felt really similar to me to ordinals. And I thought, like you said, doing all this prep and getting ready for it, that it was going to be like Uniswap. I psyched basically. myself out, homie. I psyched it out. I, psyched, <laughs> I, I was like, ah, am I going to be buying from the from spreadsheets on Discord, sending my own transactions? Like, no, bro. These tools were made, and we're lucky to have had them. Um, they made it oh, very yeah. easy. I mean, yeah. when we talk about UTXOs, by the way, guys, like basically at the really highest level, all that's really saying is like, if you think about it from like an EVM standpoint, when you're splitting your Bitcoin into a bunch of different UTXOs, all you're really doing is the equivalent of making a bunch of different wallets, right? 
So, like, if you don't want to, like, go through the process of splitting UTXOs and learning what all this stuff is, um, the same concept can be applied by just literally moving your Bitcoin to a bunch of different Bitcoin wallets and experts, which is really easy to do. You literally just hit the plus and create a new wallet. And then when you, root, when you mint, you can mint basically on a bunch of different wallets versus, like, one with a bunch of XC, uh, USDL. This only applies to people that need to do more than one transaction at a time. So yeah. if you're new, this literally doesn't even apply to you. You can connect your wallet and purchase just like an NFT. Oh, yeah. I listen to just like a token. Bro. Oh, okay, I'm just making sure. <laughs> I, I don't know who's in. Like, cause some of these guys, like, and even myself, bro, coming from Solana and Ethereum, I, I, I was a little confused. Even even having a, a year plus with Ordinals experience, yeah. I was still confused. I was like, what is that a UTXO? What the fuck? Why do I care? Why, what the yeah, fuck? I mean, it was, it was set up to be like this crazy stuff, but it's really, it's not that simple. The, basically, the gist of it is like, when you make a transaction on Bitcoin, it takes a long time sometimes, right? And your transaction is stuck because it uses all of your Bitcoin, right? So they tell you, okay, make a bunch of UTXOs. So when you're making a transaction, you're not using all of your Bitcoin, so you can do multiple transactions in the same wallet, like Eddie is saying, right? Um, so the fix for that would be like if you were trading on Ethereum and you had a, a trade that was just stuck pending on Etherscan, right? You can cancel that. On Bitcoin, you can't do that. You just have to wait. So it can take a really long time. And it can basically brick your wallet out where you can't do other stuff until it confirms, right? So... To get around that, people were doing stuff like splitting UTXOs on Luminex or just moving their Bitcoin to different wallets so you can execute transactions from different wallets for the same rune, just making sure if one gets stuck, you have a backup. And I will add this. <clears throat> so this was a painful lesson, but um, you know we burned close to half a Bitcoin just on failed mints. Because what happens if you send a transaction for a mint, it's too slow. And then it mints out is you don't get a refund and you don't get the runes. So, um, so, so. Oh, that was such a gas. fun part. That was yeah. such a fun part that we left out there. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. If and, you didn't fully ape the gas, I'm talking like it's already like 30, 50 X. If you didn't hundred X the gas, there was no, it was almost, almost no guarantee that you could mint any of these. It was gnarly, T. It was gnarly, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I felt like the experience was kind of like playing Super Mario's for the first time where you just die uh, due to, like, you fall off or, uh, you know, <laughs> get trapped. And then you learn how to overcome that on your next playthrough. And then you get hit again with something else. So now I've kind of figured out the minting process. Like, I have the sites I use. I, I know how many TX, uh, transactions to send. But at the beginning, like, no one knows what the hell is going on. There's people in my chat, like, talking about how they lost over a Bitcoin just due to failed mints and stuff. Um, so, yeah, so that's, you know, that's kind of the, the fun of getting all this stuff really early and just having to experiment. Bro, well, I thought you only lost the gas, like the fee when you, when you were, like, minting and it failed. You lose it all. Yeah, well, the fee is super high if, if, if the gas is spiked and you don't get the, the tokens either. It's horrible. Yeah, it, I lost on one of them, and I was just like DMing everyone I know. I'm like, who has a mempool login? I'm like, get me. <laughs> so, so I will drop this um, this tool that I tested yesterday. It's called RoomBlaster.io. It's uh, good one now, and it's free. Very good one. Yeah, and you can. It, it makes the minting process super simple, and you can use it to speed up or cancel transactions that are pending. Oh, so if you, yeah. If you see something's not going to make it. Um, by looking at mempool.space and seeing that it's not going to make it before the mint's over, you can just speed it up or cancel it um, and, and save your gas there. Perfect. Yeah, That's I just added that awesome. to our list. I was always using the PC, what was it? PCP, P, not PCP, Jesus Christ. PCPFP, CPFP bot. You know that one, T? Yeah, yeah, I haven't played around with it, but. it was. It's just very it's manual. Like, like you, you type in your transaction and. You know, you can speed it up, but that room blaster thing definitely, definitely, definitely do that. It was called CPFP. It was a secret labs tool, and it was like mm. this shit is so manual, guys. It's like the whole website is like chain mainnet enter transaction ID. You enter your ID, and it like able to speed up. Yes, and then like it just <laughs> pops up. But you're dealing with some really manual stuff, and the reason that I'm telling you this is because this was the thesis behind me buying pups um, at six cents. I was like, all right, the pups mint was crazy. 
you couldn't get to the website, they broke the minting site. So when it got to Magic Eden, I auto swept. I, I, I bought 15 of them at like 300 bucks. And I saw them instantly go to 700 bucks. Then they went to 1500 bucks. And then I found out that their parent collection had been airdropped a token like a year ago. It was like the first meme coin on Bitcoin. It was the first airdrop on Bitcoin. And while I was like going to buy it, I was like, this fucking sucks. I was like, buying these things sucks. I was like, I got to connect. I'm not sure what's going on with these batches and the blocks. I don't. It looks like you have to understand code to even make a purchase of a BRC if you had never bought one before. So when I was in there, I'm like, oh, wait a second. What are my rules? Friction is good. Friction is good. So I bought the friction. I'm like, these guys are going to go nuts when they find out about this token. And when they find out that, that you know, when someone lists it somewhere, so like that was my biggest purchase and my most successful trade of all time. Honestly, um, I've been in crypto for you know about seven seven years plus, nice. and and that and that pups trade was was absolutely I, I was right. Like you know people found out about it and then before you know it, Anthem's tweeting it and the shit's sixty bucks and I've, I've caught my thousand X or whatever it might have been a ten thousand X. Um, I don't I don't really know the zeros there, but the point is buying in the friction. Like a lot of people like that are buying into these ruins. You're taking a bet, but you're buying in the friction. So just like be a little patient. And don't sell in the friction. Like a lot of people came into runes and expected full DeFi tooling, Dex, freaking like liquidity pool, like all this. It, it's coming. You know what I mean? All that stuff's coming. But um, you, you buy into the friction to sell into the outflow and in the outflow of the volume. So Magic Eating is going to get a lot cleaned up and people are going to start getting into these. And, you know, I still think that, you know, we are early. <laughs> I hate the word, but, you know, we are. And, um, you know, people that had already bought into the craze on runes on the day of um there's a lot of the impatient mean coin traders that have already sold them and and, and i think it's, it's it's at a good balance right now so definitely um it's, it's definitely something to consider like like i love buying weird shit that's hard to buy in crypto i mean like i, I look oh, for yeah. it i mean like, the i don't know about so it important. man i'm like oh i'm like oh yeah i don't <laughs> get it yeah baby someone teach me call all my friends <laughs> Tell me to buy this thing but well, that was like the Tau trade, right? Like people were buying Tau OTC at like twenty bucks, and no one knew what the hell it was. And you know, those people are retired now. Yeah, literally, man. It only takes one good trade and just a little bit of friction, in, in my opinion. You know, so um, that's just a, some words to the wise. I'm like, like my my thinking on like why I didn't like why have I put some of my money over there. You know, love friction. Love yeah, it. I mean, the harder it is to buy something, typically the better it does, right? Yep. If like other people aren't going to take the same steps, and then by the time they think like, oh, it's time to take those steps, right? You've been in for so long that like yeah, you're we're, right. we're betting on the devs, we're betting on the business, we're betting on crypto long term. You know, it's definitely very leveraged risk and very high risk, but it's worth it. You know, it's like it's definitely worth it. Yeah, by the way, can I let, am I allowed to let someone up here? Can this sweep it out up here? He's like a triple OG um, Ordinals user, the red eye OMB guy. I don't know if you're allowed to bring people up if you have a schedule, but he's definitely brilliant. I learned many, many a things from that man. That's on you, though. Can I bring him up down or no? You guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Big, okay, cool. uh, Tom's uh, getting a call. Oh, Tom, Tom, Tom's disconnected. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Well, what's up, guys? I'm Fast Edward. Uncle Eddie, welcome to the Ordinals, Rooms, and Solana Season Begin Show. Drop a comment in the bottom in the purple, retweet the space, and tell your friends to come learn about Ordinals and Solana. We are together now. We're mixed. We're all one big happy family. And uh, here we go. Let me get him back up here. I'm just fucking around. Um, here we go. Oh, man. It's so weird having a space without my music. I always have the music in the background for moments like this. Here we go, Tom. How's it going, brother? You back? You with us? All right, cool. And I was like, oh, is it? Is it no, here? I is saved it the day, bro. Silence? I saved the day, man. I, I jumped in and entertained everyone, and we were all having That's chats. That's what I like to hear, man. Yo, do you care if I let Sweeper come up here? He's like my yeah, guru. call him up. He, he's yeah, literally ahead. my. He's like I learned everything from this guy. And yeah, if they sure. have a red eye OMB, they have a five Bitcoin PFP, if not more. So I'm like, dude, these guys know what's up, man. I was sitting there when that OMB came out in their Discord, depths of the bear market, and uh, ZK Shark uh, launches these things on Magic Eden. Just puts them all up. He just lists them. Now, that's how he did his launch. Everyone was kind of waiting. He just lists them. And I think they were about 3,000 United States cash when they came out. Right, Sweeper? The OMB Red Eyes? I think they were about 3,000 bucks? So maybe? the mint was 0.1. Okay. Mint at, like, it, was a, it was like 
completely fair launched and you had to go through the discord do a riddle and then there was like a raffle then you oh well then i'm point. talking about the blue eyes the blue eyes were just no, released and on then Magic the Eden, red eyes right? then he started listing on red eye uh he did like half that way and then the rest he started listing on Magic Eden. And I sat there, and I remember I had fifteen hundred bucks ready, and I was on the phone with Doosty, and I was like, "Bro, you want to split this, John?" He's just like, "No, dude, I can't." I'm like, "Me neither, honestly." I'm like, "Fuck it," and we faded, you know, half a million dollars or so right then, then and there. And uh, so, what? You've been in there since day one, Sweeper. Tell us a little about your background, ordinals, and uh, and such. I, I know you from Solana, but you became Bitcoin king very quickly. Yeah, so I was told about ordinals like in January 2023. ZK was telling me about it. It was like this very, very new thing. There was like videos of KC, like pre-ordinals, talking about ordinals and what he was trying to do. Was told to sink a note. I was just was going through some stuff, so I couldn't do it in time. Then I bought some ordinals on ETH. Like they had like a wrapped ordinals on ETH. Um, I bought like a 20, 20, 20K inscription one there, then burned it to Bitcoin. And then I was getting calls from ZK about the project. Eventually, I was like, okay, I'm just going to buy because I knew him from way back in the day on Solana. So figured it was a good investment. It was like 0.269 Bitcoin and Bitcoin was like 25K. So I bought two. And then the uh, Blue Eye Mint was like right next, right after that. It was like 0.075. Bought those two. I thought I was going to flip a red or a blue and then they went to like four Bitcoin. And I was thinking, oh my God. Thank you. Imagine that. Imagine how bad that fumble would hurt. <laughs> yeah, I didn't flip any. I, I haven't sold a single one. I got five of them things, man. Yeah, I got like forty six. Haven't sold any. <laughs> gonna keep. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> gonna you keep have them all. Forty six. Are you the biggest holder? No, no, no. There's some people with bigger bags. Um, that's freaking beautiful, man. And dude, OMB comes out of the dust a couple weeks ago with a Christie's auction. Did you guys talk about that yet? That was insane, Tom. Did you see that? Oh, no, I don't know. So, OMB, Sweeper, tell us about the Christie's auction or anything, at least anything you know yeah. about it. Because I know you, you're one of the winners of the auction. So, so the Christie's auction was a auction of OMB and OMB assets and um, also the artists from OMB. So, there were four lots. One lot was... A uh, red eye, a blue eye, a green eye, and an orange eye, like all super rare, very good looking going bees. All the proceeds from that went to Ross, uh, the Ross Obreich Freedom Fund. I think that's the name. And it sold for 441K. Then a net lot two was Birkin Bags' um, art piece that went for 88200 88, The other one was Tony Artist Journal, it's called. I went for 75600 And Lot 4, which was one of the first pieces of fine art on Block 9 ever inscribed, called This Is Me, went for 126000 and it comes with a physical, so you got an ordinal and a physical. I want. I lot feel four. like I feel like we we got like that's like a robbery. How low all of those went for? By the way, in my opinion. Oh, it's going to be an incredible. It's an incredible investment. Lot one. Um, Sold for under, uh, like, the guy could have sold the red and the blue for covering the cost of his um, his lot win. The problem is Christie's has, a you have to be K, do KYC and then prove your funds in order to bid. Mm -hmm. And then you have to also send from, like, a one of the top exchanges, like, wallets. Like, you had to send from Coinbase, Crypto.com, those sort of wallets. You couldn't just send That's them. where they lost us. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, I mean, you want to make sure you're paying the taxes back for two million dollars. I'm like, how did it not? Like, I, I was confused. Like, because I, I actually could have afforded one of the pieces, and I was like, I didn't even load up or even attempt the KYC because I thought that I was going to be priced out. So I was like, why would I sacrifice all these all this tax money just to lose an auction? You know, that was kind of my thinking. Yeah, but fuck, got played, man. Oh yeah, for but, sure. I mean, people thought it was going for two million, um, but I think in the right environment. That can definitely fetch $2 million. And Sweeper, you also um, had, play, had an incredible trade with Pups, too. I'm pretty sure you were positioned better than me, and and my trade was, like, life-changing. 
So <laughs> I'm curious. I just wanted to tell you guys about Sweeper and tell you about his background so I could kind of like establish who he is for, for everybody here because he's like, he's totally winning uh, on every front. Yeah, no, it's super um, helpful. Yeah, t- t- thank you for, for letting me do that. I'm not trying to take over your show. Tell me to shut up any time. <laughs> but You're I, good. I, I just wanted to get Sweeper's opinion on his, his thesis, uh, long-term, one-year thesis on, on runes and BRCs and Bitcoin tokens and how, how, did, how much did you participate in runes and what do you think about them? Yeah, of course. So for BRC20s, when Ordi came out, there was a watershed moment in Bitcoin where you could actually buy tokens on Bitcoin. And already went was like a two day mint, and it was twelve dollars to mint basically a thousand of them. And I missed the mint. I bought on secondary, you know, sold them for like twenty five bucks. It was a pretty good trade. And then all these other BRCs went off. I you know made decent money on them. And then I also bought pops because I was told like so. Farmer Joe was a deployer and was pretty connected at that time. ZK Shark told me like, hey, this is a good, good idea to buy it. They first airdrop on Bitcoin and like just a good community to be in. So I bought like a fairly sizable bag. I wanted to buy ten percent. I did not because I just forgot to. I, you know, it's just kind of it's a, it was a moon or dust bag. It went to dust, and I bought it at, like six cents, mm-hmm. and I just never sold. And then I woke up. It was like a two dollar one. It was a you know forty cents. Uh, and so, I remember. It went back back down to twenty cents, and it went up to a dollar. Came back down, went to two dollars, came back down, and then eventually, um, you know, Farmer Joe said we're going to do a runes token, and we're also going to airdrop runes to our uh, puppet and opium holders so they can participate and have like basically summation of both communities to make this next runes token that's going to you know have this pretty big community. So. That took off, and then he bridged to Solana, which a lot of people were very bearish on. They ridiculed him for days, and then eventually Ansem major called dip him. On the, major dip on that. But what that did, and what I think is an important part of that story, is it, it's the first use case, successful use case, and the future use case for using Solana as the Bitcoin L2. Because I think L2s are stupid. That's my take on them, period. Um, until this, where I actually saw it being used and uh, my opinion changed very quickly and i was like oh my gosh look like i'm keeping 75 percent of my bag on bitcoin where it's safe and we're and, and it's just like offline and no one can touch it and no one can take it even if the world imploded but then i have you know this percent of my bag like 25 percent of it on soul where i can day trade it and earn a bigger position and then bridge it easily back to bitcoin and i'm like oh my god i just used an l2 for weeks and loved it. And I was just like, I was like, oh my God. I'm like, what a cool case for Solana. And then, then you see the Zeus token came out and they have this bridge and they're, they're, they're going to do more and more and more. I just did a spaces with them earlier this morning and learned a lot. Um, but I was just impressed. I'm impressed with the marriage of Bitcoin and Solana, not only on the tech side, but in community as well, you know? Yeah, I think that bringing in Ansem on the Solana side was a pretty big deal, right? Like he had that one spaces with like 150,000 viewers. And that thing just exploded, right? Like, what a catalyst. And I think it's only going to go higher. Like, I think uh, the, the meme of world peace right now in this turbulent time, as well as Bitcoin runes, which we I haven't really touched on runes that much, but if I could just go really quickly on it. So Bitcoin Please. ordinals was like the first time, like one of the first time you had mass adoption of putting digital art on Bitcoin. And then BRC20s were these JSON files that you were able to make. They were basically became coins and you could trade them and make, um, you know, make a market in coins. And, you know, already the first coin ever to be on Bitcoin. You know, you could have like a basically leverage play on Bitcoin without having any um, borrow cost or any liquidation possibility. And then Casey Rodimore, the founder of Ordinals, was not too happy with the way the BRC 20s were. He wanted to make his own, so he made Bitcoin runes. And he did it on the, ha- he said he's going to go live on the halving block. And on the halving block, we had like 2,000, 3,000, like after the halving block, we had incredible fees. I think halving block also had very, very high fees. Uh, w- the block ended really quickly. And then the next block, just like, halving block two- went up to, I think went up to the highest uh, fee paid for, uh, 
transaction. How much was paid for the first inscription for the for the first moon? I think it was somewhere millions of dollars, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like I think five hundred k for the F E Z Z F E H U. Um, something yeah. like that, maybe 500, 600K. And then we don't know how much they may have paid a miner to like push their block through or push their etching through. And then we had sustained fees on Bitcoin where the Bitcoin blockchain, the miners were paying more money in fees than they were getting in block rewards. So, you know, miners basically make their money by getting the block reward for mining Bitcoin and then selling those Bitcoins. And that's their business. And usually, the, like, before Ordinals, the mempool was empty. It was very little transactions happening. After Ordinals happened, we had spikes. And now, for the first time, I think we had a few blocks in the summer that were above the uh, block reward. Like, very few, maybe two or three. And now, on the happening day, we have, like, I think every block for, like, the first, like, 100 blocks were above the block reward. So... You know, miners are, have to obviously take pe pay attention, and like this could easily be a flywheel for them to, you know, participate in ordinals and runes. Market make them push more volume, so more people get involved, and more people want to participate and push the fees up, so they can make more money. Um, it was it was extremely impressive, man, and and to see that kind of action leads me to the most obvious question, in my opinion, is: Are we going to see the entire Bitcoin market manipulated by the miners? Like, because like, let's say. I go on fucking whatever the uh, what's the fit? LinkedIn and find out who's working for these big companies. I find myself a miner. I get in his pocket and I want to push transactions through at high volume times. Are these guys going to ultimately like? Because it looks like that one company, that one mining company, kind of pushed that block through, and, and it was very apparent if you look at the mempool, right? Oh yeah. Do you do you think we're going to see a crazy manipulated oh, market, or, or is that just I, I here? Think I don't know how hand, manipulated right? it will be, but I think you're going to see volume come in from miners, and they're going to spend money. So maybe they'll manipulate in the sense of pushing the mempool by making some excitement. But I don't know if they're going to like manipulate it by like you know trying to decide how high things can go and how low things can go. Can you talk a bit, high. Sweeper, about like how that actually happened as far as like you know the miners pushing the block through? On the happening so, block specifically, Sweeper, like how would one have manipulated that? Because they confirm the transactions, right? Mm -hmm. So they can confirm that transaction. Like a miner can confirm anyone's transactions. They, they usually they just confirm the the most the highest fee because they want to make the most money. But yeah, yeah, I mean, you could pay, you know, three hundred and like tell, hey, the miner, this is my block, this is my thing. I want you to confirm it. And some people, there's some conspiracies that some of these guys paid on the table. A little bit like bribing on Ethereum? A little, a little bit, bit yeah. like the way the entire universe works. That's what I was asking. <laughs> but there's no confirmation on that, that that happened, that they were under table payments. That's interesting. Okay. Conspiracy I mean, so, theory. So, yo, Tom, if you go on mempool, right? Just mm -hmm. mempool.space. Mm -hmm. You'll see which mining company pushed the last block through on the bottom of the mm -hmm. block. It'll say, like, okay. name me two of the company sweeper. I think Foundry is the one. Yeah, that Foundry. That. Yeah, so Foundry, like you'll see across the blocks, like like, like who pushed it through, and it's like, you know, I, I just from you know my past and my mafioso <laughs> background. I'm just kidding, but I could only think that, you know, there's like if, if you got a guy, you're like, hey, I want oh yeah, I mean, everyone is money motivated, right? Hey, I'm, it's not that go, crazy of a theory. I want, yeah. I want to find that miner, man. I want to hire that dude. <laughs> he, I'll hire him to literally live in a mansion and do nothing except answer my call when I call. Um, <laughs> This is all you know, a conspiracy, like, though. I, mean, I just want to be straight, straight up. Like, there's no, <laughs> there's no confirmation that any of this happened that they paid under the table or anything like that. No, this absolutely not. It is purely spe speculative. I'm not here to spread any form of misinformation at all. But it's just in the world that I live in, people get what they pay for. Oh yeah, I mean that's the reality, right? And, and like, you think it's a conspiracy that some of the biggest companies are, happen to get the first runes? No, come on, baby. You know, <laughs> stop it. Stop that nonsense. So, guys, like. <laughs> We all have information as far as like where to mint runes and like what might be good. What are some tools that people can use to track like what's going on with runes to find things that are being minted a lot and like that there's hype behind without actually being in some of these groups and basically being told that it's happening? Luminex, man. You can use your skills on Luminex. That's the site that I mentioned when we first started talking about runes. And it's where they show up when a new one's etched and it's mintable. It's public mints. 
Anyone can connect to Rollin and Mint. There's no whitelisting. There's no bullshit. Um, so what what I do is because obviously there's tons of these things, right? I'm just looking at it. Like I, I got I got my four four windows, my four monitors open, and I have the Luminex one open, and I'm just looking at it. If something gets close to being minted out, like say seventy percent, and there's only like maybe 10% pending, I'm like, okay, I can get one through. I might throw a couple hundred bucks at this just to see what happens. That's if you're spraying and praying, but that's yeah. the equivalent of hunting deck screener for new pairs. You would go on Luminex, you would click mint runes, and you would look for ones that are almost minted out. Because the theory there, if they're not minted out, <laughs> they might not mint out, and there goes your Bitcoin, right? Like, your tokens are useless. But if it's about to be minted out, you at least have the opportunity to sell it on the open market with other people that are buying it, and you're you're forecasting or speculating on volume. Can the teams mint them out themselves? Yes. Can, a, can any one person go mint a whole shitload of these things and take a huge percentage of them? Yes. But, again, that's just what a speculator would do. You would look I think a cool thing, too, about that, right, is, like, when these guys are making these mints, right, they're not getting money for us minting. They're only getting money if they keep, like, yeah. a supply and they pre-mine, right? So yeah. for people listening, right, like, a lot of these, like, mints that are going up, if you don't see the team, like, keeping their own, like, mints, basically, you know that they're not making money from doing this. So they've paid a cost to create this, right? And then you have to buy your to make own tokens. It if you yeah. make the ticker, you literally have to buy them unless you pre- Pre pre mine them or pre mint them, which is which is a bearish signal to most, right? You know, yeah. like if a team pre mints, let's say two percent, and they have a white paper and a distribution chart, let's fucking you know, sure. Like if you believe them and trust them, like pre minting would be somewhat accepted. But for the most part, if you're looking meme style and, and you're looking to looking for a winner and, and you're trying to find that, look for one that has nothing pre mined that's almost minted out and sneak your butt in there. You know, like yeah, and that's a really cool concept with runes, right? Yeah. Because like on Ethereum and, and other chains, right? You try and avoid stuff where the team has their own supply or they basically can do things where they nuke you, right? And there's sell pressure. These guys, they're making money from taxes or they're making money from like selling their own tokens, right? With runes, it really doesn't work that way. Like you can't really hide what's going on. So these guys are incentivized to finish out their mints. So like Eddie's saying, if you find something that's going to finish out, you know it's going to list and like you at least have some sort of exit opportunity, right? But if you mint something because you're trying to like find something super early and, and get lucky, you can get stuck just being in this thing that maybe the team doesn't want to spend the money to mint it out because they won't be able to sell it. Exactly. So, so just to add on that do. real quick, um, you know, earlier we talked about uh, looking for looking for alpha where most people aren't looking, and you know, a strategy that I, I saw worked really well for the I don't know how to pronounce it the the Wonk Winko. Uh, token, uh, which was one of the best uh, performers on Rune, went like 30, 50x, was they had a, a huge um, supply, or I think it was unlimited, but they had it end at a block height. So it was only open for like three hours or whatever, but people who were just monitoring the mint progress, they saw that like 1%, so they skipped it. But in actuality, it was being minted really fast and minted by a lot of big players who, you know, eventually pump the hell out of it. So I would say look for that as well. Look for runes that are deployed that can only be minted between um, certain blocks. And then by the end of the block, pay attention whether you know it's worth minting then. Because I think that's where you can find uh, good projects that kind of are stealth that most people aren't looking at because it doesn't look minted out. Yeah, and they rip fast yeah. too. Some of them just go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right on. Okay, it. guys. I think I'm going to wrap it on, on runes here and just really quickly talk a little bit about uh, base coins and like what's going on over there. And then we'll wrap it up. Probably talk about this for like five minutes. So, and feel free to chime in, even though this isn't like your, <laughs> your area. But we talked a little bit about meme launches earlier um, and about like when they have these big private sales how it just doesn't make much sense. Like me and Eddie were talking about like the upside really isn't there if it's not like a mystery, right? When you raise a lot of money for a meme and people see all this money going into the meme, it's not like there's no like innovation or creativity to it. Like you're not having to raise $10 million to create memes on Twitter, right? So the upside is so low for someone who's buying on the secondary market. And we've seen that a lot with coins that have launched on Solana and Base where they've raised a lot of money. And these meme coins just all super tank. 
So like what I've been looking for is like looking for coins where they have high liquidity and like, I don't know what they are and my friends don't know what they are. Right. And hopefully there's no private sale that's attached to it. So that's kind of how I've been looking at like the meme coin space with Solana and base to try and find things I think are good. Just really looking for like organic mooners. And to that point, a little contradictory, but yesterday, last night, there was a coin that launched called snort. Um, I think they might be in the spaces. I'm not really sure. So <laughs> Snort launched. <laughs> I saw them earlier and I, they might've left because like, we were just talking about roots for, for a while. Right. Um, but Snort launched and basically, uh, they were a team that actually launched on Binance Launchpad like two years ago or so, and they had another token. And then they said, wow, base is super hype. Let's V2 effectively on base and airdrop some of our holders this new token. Kind of similar to like a little tangential like what Pops did, right? Um, and basically, we'll set them up and then we'll promote this new token called Snort. So that launched last night. I think it's like sitting around like 9 or 10 million or so. It was like epically sniped, basically. Uh, but the sniper has been like selling and is mostly out and there's a lot of big names behind it. So I did mention want to mention that so you could take a look at that. I think the risk with something like that, right, is that initial pump can get you in trouble, right? But once that pump's done and it starts like zeroing up and selling and like kind of going up, it, it creates a good opportunity. Because basically, if you know there's a good team behind something and you know they're going to work and not disappear, like that's always a good bet that you can make in like the meme space, the rune space, or in the space, whatever, right? You're betting on these people to build something that other people will think is good. Because this is all like a psychological game. Thousand percent, man. Thousand yeah, percent for for base, bro. The only thing I have on base is like mf -er and um. I think still I got mf -er, huh? <laughs> yeah, bro. I, I actually bought the dip. Like I'm still up on buying the dip. Like the other day, I bought like nice, okay. and then back in, and then there was another one. I, I like I like 10 x on one the other day. In and out though, it was called like 404 skin or something. I think it's dead now. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just that like, sounds like a coin that would be on base. Yeah. It's actually pretty funny, yeah. I, I just keep like an ETH or two on Photon and just jump in if there's something real special. I'm just kind of waiting for, for something different. Oh, you got to use Banana, man. Really? Is it better? Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to use Banana or Sigma if you're fucking around on base, honestly. I had I'm Penn as a speaker, whatever, but man. I think he he bounced. But... I, just, I got Bonkbot on Soul, and I know there's better options. I'm just like stuck in my yeah, ways. I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna push Banana on you. You got to try it. Shoot me a I'll DM it, after, I'll and I'll, I'll walk you through it. Give me that ref link, bro. If I like it, you have to get paid. <laughs> You're about to get yeah, paid. You're gonna be then, you're gonna be aping that big size in, man. I'm right? about it. And then the only <laughs> other thing I wanted to mention was on the rune side. I know I talked about yeah. Marsic being a safe one. There was one that actually one that like me and all my friends minted and like really big. Oh yeah, I'm in this one. About. Yeah, Elsa, man. The ticker is Elsa. So it was the first fair launch, just like we mentioned, with no pre mine, and and it was actually like etched on that first happening block. So someone spent like anywhere from ten to five hundred thousand dollars to make this thing. And I really like it. And it's the name of Hal Finney's dog, who was the guy who accepted the first transaction of Bitcoin ever from Satoshi Nakamoto. So Hal, always, any picture, if you Google Hal Finney, it's him next to his dog. So I was like, okay, it's got a little story. It's got a little <laughs> provenance. I'm like, it, it had crazy volume in the beginning. It caught a little dip and it's starting to come back up. And uh, yeah, I would just uh, definitely keep your eye on on. Elsa as as technically yeah. the first dog on uh, on uh, runes, you know. And so. the cost that they did to that they used to mint that is important, right? Because that's telling you basically what their financial commitment is into it, right? So yeah, someone's spending so someone a lot of money, like anywhere from ten to hundreds of thousands of dollars into this, and like, yeah, they're trying yeah. to make money, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure that this thing's gonna gonna root root root. So anyway, <laughs> want to throw that out there real quick. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me, brother. Uh, this has been really fun. I'll, I'll pull up whenever. Yeah, sweet, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, we host uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, 3 p.m. Usually, sometimes we have guests on, sometimes we don't. Usually, just talk about news like we did here. And then some sort of topic. I mean, I have a background basically in memes. I've done it for years, right? So people know me as like a sniper botter, right? So we we'll just kind of go through some of the best ways to position yourself within the space. So yeah, I really appreciate you coming on, helping me co-host while Sig's in China. And thanks, TW, yeah, thank for you. coming on as well. Um, and I didn't know you, Sweeper, but thanks for coming on. You definitely have a lot of insights in like the Bitcoin world. I have very little understanding of what goes on over there. So 
it was great hearing your insights. Yeah, dude. If once a week or once every two weeks you guys want to do Bitcoin style, we're happy to jump in. And I'm a I'm a mimetic connoisseur myself, so I'm a cross chain <laughs> memer. I'm happy to join whenever. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks okay. Yeah, me, that bro. Sounds Thank you guys. All right, guys. Yeah. Appreciate everyone coming on. Take care. Catch you guys all later.